and necessities, and Dean are here, and myself. So, we move on to C, consent agenda, um, AP warrants number 19, dated 1-8-24, and payroll registers number 2, 1-11-24, and number 3, 1-18-24. Just need a motion to accept. I'll make a motion to accept the um, AP and payroll, AP warrants and the payroll registers. Second. Mom voice. Mom voice. All in favor? Oh, that's right. All in favor? You might have to be running on me. Let the letter give the acceptance of the um, meetings of select board meeting on January 8th, 2024. A motion to accept the minutes of the select board meeting from January 8, 2024. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Old business. Number one. All right. So you have in your packet the tax collector um, job description. And I just want to let you know that I had a conversation with Julie Rich today and she's willing to accept it. She has a couple of conditions. Uh, she wants to make sure that she can still take her vacation in March. And I told her no problem, she can take her vacation in March. Uh, she would also like to have an additional uh, money, uh, additional money on top of her, her uh, regular pay that she's getting as a deputy clerk. So, um, we can talk specifics about that in the executive session for personnel later, or we can talk about it now. I don't know what the protocol is. Do you have numbers to share? I have numbers. And then we can come out and make more stress. Yeah, I have numbers, yeah. Okay, items of communication. Do you have Madison report? Yes. There should be two of them. And I also have a thank you letter from the American Legion Auxiliary that um, they were grateful. Um, on behalf of the American Legion Auxiliary Town of Galantia Unit 39, I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to you and the Board of Selectmen in allowing the unit members a place to hold meetings for a few months. This allowed our ever important organization to continue its mission. In the spirit of service, not self, the mission of the American Legion Auxiliary is to support the American Legion and to honor the sacrifice of those who serve by enhancing the lives of our veterans, military, and their families, both at home and abroad. For God and country, we advocate for veterans, educate our citizens, mentor youth, and promote patriotism, good citizenship, peace, and security. Thank you for your continuous support of the American Legion Auxiliary and our veterans in service, not self, Robin Turk. Um, number two, the town report on expenses and budget. Okay. Um, all right. So we're currently at about 51% overall, and it should be, we're in week 29, so that's 56%. I'm scouring the budget to see if I can't find a temp, a part time temp until June that's kind of a per diem person. Um, I'm looking for the money to support that, and I, that's why I was at, talking with you, Kathy, earlier today about the, um, uh, the money that's in the backyard farms. Um, I have not been able to find it. Uh, one of the things that concerns me about the budget right now, the um, expenses right now, is that some of them are pretty, pretty close to um, over. Some of them are over, but some of them are pretty close to going over, uh, particularly, where was it? Um, well, most of them, when it comes to payroll, the general operating, you'll see some lines in the red for sick and vacation and holiday because those are built into the general line. That's not my concern. That's where am I looking? The insurance one, did you have a concern yes. about that? Yes. So okay. that, did you end up finding out? Yes. So on the bottom of page one, the insurance is general liability. 
7,000 of that is supposed to come out of a different line in the budget. And we just need to allocate that and Jill is going to do a journal entry to uh, move that into uh, boards and committees. General liability. That, well, it'll it'll bring it a lot closer. It'll still be over, but not by seven thousand six hundred. Right. I'm guessing it maybe something the insurance will not more than it is. Yes. And that's that's been consistent over the last three years. Yep. Um, so some of the ones that we're close on have to do with highway, um, but it's been a rough couple of months. So. We're getting close on, let me find it, this is something. Sorry, I thought I had it all squared away for you. Um, it is, okay. So supplies, he's, he's gone, he only had a small budget for supplies, but he's gone through that. Um, IT, um, anything that's over 75% is, is something that kind of is a red flag to me right now. Even though he's still in the positive, we're you know, only halfway through the budget year and he's three quarters of the way through his money in some spots and some spots even more. So I'm trying to keep a close eye on that and work with him on, on keeping it under budget. So like the safety equipment? Yep. And the safety equipment happened because we had a safety meeting, a safety inspection by Maine Municipal Risk Management, and they found a bunch of stuff. So, um, but I'm going to keep looking um, for that temporary part-time help because. Um, I'm concerned that we've got two full-time on the counter and one part-time on the counter, and and Cheyenne is coming up to speed, working the counter and, and pitching in where she can. But if we have, you know, uh, if somebody else comes down with COVID and we're going to be short-handed, we need to have somebody be able to come in and step in. So I'm going to keep looking. I'm not sure I'll be able to find it, but I'm going to keep looking for part-time. For, for money in the budget to fund a part-time until June when we can get more resources allocated. So, my, my thing too, and, and I, I don't know, but if you have a part-time, part, if you're looking to have a part-time person, which you know, you need find money, whatever, um, but what's the likelihood you're going to find a part-time person with experience? Because now you not only are getting a part-time person, they don't have any experience, they need training on just the basics. Right. Um, just to get by to help. And I guess if you're a part time person, if you were able to find the funds and you found a person, mm -hmm. I'm going to assume it's just to help some of them on the counter because they won't be able to do the whole counter right. alone. Right. right. Is that is that the just of that's, it? Just, that's my initial thought. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, if there is somebody out there that has um, experience, that would be great. Um, and there, there's actually, so the answer to your question is 50-50. What are the chances 50-50? Because we have two people that have actually come forward and said that they would be interested. Okay. One of them with experience, one of them that would be, need training. Uh -huh. so. I, mean, I, I just think you know, if we have the money we're going to have a struggle to find the money to have a part-time person, let alone with the money to train somebody to be the part-time person, because that takes it, that takes time, and you can't expect them to come in and do it for nothing. Right. Agreed. <coughs> We're just ready to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs>
This is apologize for being late. A little issue at the gym. So we are moving on to number one. The resolution authorizing the town manager, Denise Duchamp, to act on behalf of the town of Madison as the authorized official to accept and expend uh, grant funds from the Northern Borders Regional Commission, our NBRC, for the Go Lab, uh, Timber HP Go Lab grant. So they want to be able to spend the rest of the, the grant money that they have, but in order for us to request the reimbursement, um, I have to be on the um, grant. And currently I'm not, it's still Tim, so that's why we have the resolution. I'll make a motion to accept the resolution authorizing town manager Denise Duchamp to act on behalf of the town of Madison as the authorized official to accept and expend grant funds from the Northern Borders Regional Commission for right. Timber HP. Second. I have a motion and a second to do what Kathy just said. <laughs> this is Estes, excuse me. Um, any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, number two, Somerset Broadband Coalition in honor of the Somerset Economic Development Corporation to introduce the beneficial digital broadband opportunities available to Madison residents. Yes, I'd like to introduce Liz Caruso and Susan Hathaway. Hi. Just a note. Bring your chairs right on up. Oh, okay. Hmm. So thank you so much for setting aside some time for us. Um, I'm the broadband director for Somerset Economic Development Corporation for Somerset County. And um, we wanted to share with you what we have going on, the opportunities that are available for Madison residents. Um, many of you, you think of broadband, you know, uh, it's another word for the internet, it's another word for connection. Um, many times people think that internet access and use is a luxury. But it's no longer a luxury, it's, it's more of a utility. And because of that, um, the federal government has uh, sent a lot of grant money to the states. And so the Maine Connectivity Authority has, um, is the state organization that is um, responsible for distributing a lot of federal grant money. And we, um, so SEDC is the Somerset County partner for this effort. They divided the state into regions, and Somerset County is a region. So we came on, I came on in March, and we wrote a broadband plan for Somerset County, built it into the main broadband plan. Um, and the, the focus of this federal money is to target members of our population who are less likely to be connected or able to have the, to have the technical expertise to navigate like they should and like they need to. Um, so there are members of our population that, are, that struggle with this. It could be low income, um, rural areas, which is Somerset County, right? Um, also older adults, uh, veterans, people with disabilities, minorities. Um, we have all of that, you have all of that in Maine. And so we formed uh, the Somerset Broadband Coalition. And your Madison Library is a partner of ours. We work, we've been working with Julie um, since March. And um, we have all of our, our libraries. We have Somerset uh, Public Health, who works out of this building. Um, we have recovery residences, the Somerset County Jail. Um, we have um, Skowhegan Adult Ed. Um, and uh, what, we're, what our focus is, we have um, kind of four prongs. One you know about is infrastructure, right? We all know. When people think about broadband, they think about lines on the road. Um, that is an effort that SEDC is, has been working on for a decade. But what we're talking about now is three areas to help individuals. And I have a brochure, brochures to leave with you. The areas are um, affordable internet access, affordable devices, and then free digital skills classes. So. Um, you know, people may not have access on their street or be able to afford it. They need to know how a place to go. So libraries are like front lines for free public devices. You can go into the library, you can use it, the device for free. Um, we gave Somerset uh, Public Health um, a free laptop and a tablet to use here um, on their, they have a satellite office, I'm sure you know all about it. 
Um, we have given out uh, 48 laptops and tablets in Somerset County to our frontline partners so that the public has access to it. Um, and um, so that's just one, one example. Um, also, they need to have affordable devices. So we partnered with Give IT, Get IT in Waterville. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. They take, they take quality commercial grade uh, computers, they refurbish them, they sell them cheaply. So individuals and families, as well as nonprofits, can apply on their website and they will build them a computer that works for them. If they're, they don't need Microsoft products because they're not working on, they don't need Word and Excel, they just need to get online, maybe they're an elderly person, they need to just be able to Zoom or they go online or do telehealth with their doctor because they can't go anywhere. They'll give them just a basic, they can get like a basic laptop for $100. Um, you can get a, a, a much better laptop if you need it for school or for work. You can get a really great laptop with Microsoft. It all comes with free technical support. Um, and it's, you know, maybe $200. Um, we are working with our online partners to sponsor devices for um, individuals and families. This is not a device to play video games. But this is a device that you need for school or for work. Um, and if they highlight somebody that comes into the library and we know that they need something, we will sponsor that device and we'll cover the cost. Um, and we also have a, we purchased 10 laptops and 10 tablets that we are using as a mobile lab um, for our last area, and that is free digital or computer skill classes. So we are partnering with the National Digital Equity Center, which was founded by a, a mayor, and um, they offer free computer classes that mayors can take. You can take them um, it's online. You can take them at home online for free. You can also go into one of our partner locations. So any of our Somerset County um, coalition partners, like the libraries, um, the jail. I teach uh, classes at the jail every week. Um, uh, they, you can come in and take them for free. You can sign up. Um, and so we have a brochure that you can leave at the town office or wherever else you can think of where the public would be able to access it. Um, but basically, I've, I've been working, um, getting everything going and getting classes going. Um, but we are trying to reach more people. We're, we're coming out to all the select boards in the towns to make sure that you're aware of these opportunities, that you can bring awareness to your residents, whether it's on Facebook or your website. If you have a location um, in town that you are willing to have an on-site partner to offer these classes, we would love that. Because Julie doesn't have the space of the library. There's no room. Um, there's no private space for telehealth. There's no private space for a Zoom class. Um, all of these NDEC classes have a max of 10 people. So we're not asking for a big space, but they are all live classes. They're very interactive. There is a Zoom teacher, but a facilitator like myself or Susan is in person, um, making sure everyone's connected, making sure everyone can see, can hear, can get their questions answered, and they're all one-hour classes. So very brief, um, everything from um, internet safety, understanding, uh, being able to identify frauds and scams, how to set up an online account, how to do telehealth, how to do Zoom, everything that goes also to Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, Windows, um, how to use your phone, if it's an Android or an iPhone, there's almost 50 classes. They're all one hour in length. Some of the courses are just single one-hour classes. Some of them could be two or three, in which case you would come like consecutive days or once a week, consecutive weeks. They're excellent. Um, really, really great opportunities, and they're free. So, um, you know, all of us know people like maybe our parents. They don't understand how to use their phone or computer. They don't know why um, they have letters that are capitalized sometimes or not. You know, it's just... They're clicking on things that they shouldn't be, and they're, they're getting viruses, they're getting scammed, they're getting texts. Um, I mean, I learned to identify some frauds as well with taking these classes. So um, we just wanted you to know about it. Um, we would love to be able to partner with you somehow. If there's a location in Madison um, that 
you have, would like to make available to offer classes, we can come in with our mobile lab, we can just come in and facilitate the classes as long as it has a good internet connection that we can do Zoom. Um, we have a projector and a projector screen. Um, we just need space for 10 people uh, with or without a device. Yep, if you want to do it here, that's great. Um, so Susan is coming on because uh, we're getting busy. We're setting up these things all over the county and we need help. Um, so Susan is coming on as a digital navigator um, working with us. Now a digital navigator is someone who will facilitate the classes, but also we have this one page form. If you know of someone that needs one-on-one -on -one help, um, they can request to get a call back or contacted by a digital navigator and they can meet with them um, in an on-site, at an on-site place that we know is safe, like that we have um, an agreement with them that they're going to provide a, like a library or something. Um, yeah. We don't go into personal homes, anything like that. Yeah. So. Have you had any contact with the school? So, um, so when we did the broadband plan, I did reach out to the school. I had to find out what kind of assets we had in Somerset County, what kind of devices. So I have spoken with the technical director there um, in the past. Um, when school started, we tried to put out a, a, a flyer and a mailer to all the families so they could understand opportunities that are available. But what I have found over the, this, uh, the course of these months is that, you know, emails, emails and posts don't really make the effort, don't make the connection with people as much as one-on-one -on -one talking to people and explaining. Um, there was, um, we were also advertising the ACP program, which is the Affordable Connectivity Program, which was a federally funded um, program that saved individuals, income eligible individuals, $30 off a month off of their internet or cellular bill. However, we just found out that we are losing funding to that. Um, Congress hasn't refunded it. So um, they can still sign up, but we, we expect that um, the funding will end this spring, um, but we're waiting for we're waiting for another opportunity, or maybe it'll find its way um, to get funded. Um, but you'll see it is in here, um, and so we were pushing that to the schools too, because we know a lot of families. The only computer they have is the one the school provides, or they don't have internet access at home. As you know, during COVID, you were giving out hotspots. Um, so uh, I also have a, a flyer here from the NDEC that talks about their classes. Um, and I have one of my flyers that um, it's very similar to this brochure. It talks about give, you know, the link for Give IT, Get IT in Waterville. People can apply for a device. Um, my phone number, my internet, my email address for people to reach out. This, uh, Yeah, so that is what they do. They actually, um, but in order, the ones that they refurbish and sell are commercial grade. So they're more co corporate. Um, the the ones that you know we could get at Staples are they're not built to last that long. But what they do is they take these higher grade ones, they clean them all out, they put a brand new hard drive in, they they, they make them all good, put software in, they build it to the needs of the individual. And then they sell it. And what's wonderful is they're right in Waterville. Yes, and so they do recycle. They have a, you can go there actually and recycle. Um, I know that when I spoke with Julie many times, um, people come to the library to use the free Wi-Fi, right? And even when she's not there, they're outside. It happens to all libraries. Um, so I don't know if there's if you want to think about it and want to provide a place to offer classes. Um, yeah. um, the other thing is um, we are partnering with the Skowhegan Adult Ed. They offer a tech spot in Skowhegan um, a couple afternoons a week at the Skowhegan um, Municipal Building. And we use some of our funds to double those hours. They only have them twice a week for you know, two afternoons. So we use some of our funds to double those hours. We also partner with them. Uh, we are, we are um, 
currently in the process of opening up, uh, it's in renovation stage, a tech hub in Bingham at the old Tubby School, where we're going to have them offer a tech spot there as well, because um, not everybody can get studying. So that's another opportunity. Um, it's a one-on-one it's a, it's a -on support. So you make an appointment, and there's a qualified person here. People come in, they bring their phone, they say, I don't get this, or they bring their computer. I don't understand this. Can you help me with this? And it's like a 20-minute, you know, half-hour. So is that uh, something you can work with or on finance in place for maybe in a conference room within this building, maybe here? Absolutely. Something? Yep. I think, it's, I think it's a good program for people. Yep. That's, that. That's why I suggest the school, if you have a, you have a classroom, I mean, if you want to do it after school yeah. uh, type of thing. I don't, I don't know what the availability is, but I, I think that might also be a, something we could do. Maybe things can make out. Use of facilities form, and we can, we can, yes, the town can take, take control of a room after school. I would say that somewhere in the middle school, because people could walk there if they yep. wanted to. Yep. In high school, all you got to get transported there, but middle school would be easier to get to. Middle school has a library, right? Yep. Yep. And then another uh, one thing you should check on is make sure that uh, sometimes schools have a firewall for certain websites. So they may not, like one of the classes is um, using Facebook securely. They may not allow Facebook in the school um, or certain URLs. Um, but there's, you know, there's, there's classes on how to design a website on WordPress. Right. Um, maybe, maybe the town office would be the best place to do something. Any questions? Sounds great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. You can look up the Denise and make something happen. Well, the town manager is all right.
I was not sure what your expectation was in terms of when you wanted it done. So if you don't want it in this budget year, we can push it off and build it into the budget for 24-25. I would think that's what we do. Okay. I don't know how long this is good for, but... Should we open it up again until maybe middle of March? See if we can move? Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can certainly put it back out there and say, you're going to extend this. Uh, we're looking for additional bids because we've only got the one. Um, and, you know, and we can ask them to resubmit as part of the project. And then, um, let's make sure I got my notes here. So make, make part of fiscal 25 budget. Reopen bid timeline to you want to go two months and um, yeah, probably gonna take some time to do the to, to put the bid how together. Long, yeah, how long did this person have? I mean, I don't know how long we need this. How long? How long have we been like Two weeks? No, so yeah, more. not long. Not long. So maybe I think it was the. Yeah, it's probably about a month. I think. Yeah. March 30th? Yep. to 3.30. Okay. Is this company going to have to resubmit or can they, this will be held? No, I think we hold this. I, yeah, yeah, we can hold this. Okay, that's good. Okay. Yeah. And we'll do we know, it. I mean, I oh, didn't look through the, did it say how saying, much it's good for? He's saying here our inspections will begin no later than 30 days after the giving the green light to begin and we will provide our full written report no later than April 1st, 2024. Okay, so, so that was, I think, in the RFP was that we were going to yeah. have it quickly turned around. Uh, so I wouldn't anticipate the amount will change on this, but it might be, you know, if we get more. The dates. Well, and then the other thing is, if we're going to put it in the fiscal 25 budget, then they can't start work until July 1st. Right, right. true. So right. it would yeah. be, it would have to be um, yeah. August 1st turnaround. 30 days, mm -hmm. would 30 days be sufficient for them? If, if they get the green light on July 1st, mm -hmm. and 30 days August 1st? To be done by. To be done by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, green light should, plus 30. You should take these back. Yeah. 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 All right, citizens' concerns. <laughs> Citizens' concerns? Anybody else? Citizens' concerns? All right. This is why. Are any select board concerns? Uh, none for me, thank you. Mrs. Eskies? Uh, no, I do not. Mr. Bean? I'll ask. You may have asked. Do we have any idea where the ice rings at and the status is? Uh, um. No. So the last time I met with Joe Hayden, um, we weren't even sure we were going to be able to do it at that spot. Um, and then we got hit with the December 18th storm, and then we got hit with another storm. And so, no, I don't have I don't have a status, but I can get one for you. Are they still looking at doing it over at the apartments, or right now that's the only place we have? They moved everything. The, so the they moved the back. Onto the back. In that back one up where right. the mushroom pits were. Yeah. They moved um, the shed back there. I saw that, yeah. Um, I had some conversations with folks on. Speak on uh, <laughs> somebody was talking. Some, <laughs> someone, sorry. Someone was talking about Thomas Field. We just I asked guess they did. I don't think it was viable to put it back there because no. we didn't like it because it was way out of town. And it oh, was okay. a tendency for people to drive vehicles on that in the past. Sorry, yeah, I, the only reason, oh, I thought it had something to do with it. it didn't no. hold the water. It didn't hold the water. Yeah. It, ended up, it ended up flooding out a couple of house. Yeah. Uh, oh, on, the house. On. Yep. Oops, I don't know what oh that street goodness. is. Sorry. Um, the back side of the back side of that house that went in the house. Yep. That cost us. So, some is money that town owned property or is that something? Yeah, that's that's town. Town. The Thomas Field. Thomas Street. Yes. Thomas yeah. Field is connected to 
the, the cemetery? Yes. And at some point down the line, later than me probably, later than we're going to be around, that will be that will be part of the cemetery. Okay. And, okay. and so on the other side of the road also. An option. But I mean, I, it's not because of it's part of the cemetery. It's right. because it's not it's not viable. It didn't no, hold. It didn't they, work. They banked up. If you go up and look at it, they yeah, banked up the side, that. and it, it didn't hold that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the water seeped in. I believe it was near Pierre Plant's place that it, that yeah, it I think flooded so. out. I think so too. Yeah. 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 Um, and the other thing um, that we could consider is the 20 Park Street. I mean, I don't know if that's a viable option or not. That's town property, and it's not in the middle of a construction area. I think, I think part of the movement at West Navarro or moving the back corner was because we get the town, I think the water department moved the, the header over there for the fire hose. They, they didn't. They, they didn't, didn't end up moving it. Okay. But the rink could be flooded by the fire truck. Don, Don, Chief French could take care of that to at least get it initially, and then we just use because there's a, I think there's a fire hydrant on the other side of John Street. Yeah, there is. So, it, you know. You want to look into that? I know you're big into hockey. I can reach out. Reach out. Yeah, it's so good to have it, though. I agree. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. I just know everybody, everybody's, there's been a couple of things on Facebook because Pittsfield's open there and Clinton's open there. Everybody else is open there. Does Scott Beacon still have one? Of, they don't. They, I, they from moved the fairgrounds. Yeah. They, 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 they have, have trailers in the They moved it up to the rec center on the they, tennis court. Yeah, I don't and think it. I don't think that was good for the tennis court. No, so I don't think they have one. It would be interesting down the road if we're really serious about that. Did, I, did you see the post that I did for the one in Norway? Oh, Norway, about one of them. I mean, something like that would be perfect because you could fence it and it'd be, you know. Some of the local banks, I mean, there's no institutions in helping with it, you know, yeah. as long as it, but they, there again, it's got to be manned by volunteers and all that stuff. But that would be ideal someday to yeah. maybe start raising money for it or something. Yeah. And find the players. Fair. Anyway, so, so who are you going to reach out to? Are you going to reach you out to Joe? Joe? Yep. Okay. Because this is going to fall under the rack. Yes. Yeah. And they're having a meeting on the 31st, too, so maybe there'll be some conversation about that then. I would hope so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. Looking for a motion to go into executive session? Oh, I have one other thing to talk about. I missed my turn, I okay. know, but I'm back. All right. <laughs> did, Do did, it. <laughs> did you um, reach out to um, the sheriff, Dale Lancaster? I reached out to him. I've not heard back from him. Never heard back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Looking for a motion to go into executive session pursuant to personnel matter uh, to 1 MRSA 4056A. I'll make a motion to go into executive session. I second. it. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. All right. I have a motion and a second to go into executive session uh, a personnel matter pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056A. All those in favor? All in favor, the motion carried on executive session 710. Okay, look.